What's going on guys, Drew here, and today I'm gonna to be bringing you something that I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. So earlier this year, guys, I bought the Palmetto State Armory Micro Dagger, which is this pistol right here. Like most new guns to the market, the Micro Dagger did not have a whole lot of holster options available at the time Palmetto State released it. I found it really difficult to find an inside the waistband appendix holster because I was wanting to conceal carry the Micro Dagger. Unfortunately, not a lot of companies were making them at the time. So like most good things, I had to wait until somebody was able to produce them. So after two to three months of waiting for holster manufacturers to catch up with the demand for micro dagger holsters, I received an email from a one Mr. Jimmy Spaulding from Inheritance Armory. So Jimmy reached out to me after watching one of my micro dagger videos in the hopes that I'd be willing to help him out with the project he was currently working on. Jimmy saw the same need that I did for the micro dagger holster options in the market. He took it upon himself to actually start his own holster company. He started designing his first forms specifically for the micro dagger. After designing his first forms and a few sheets of wasted kydex and getting his design on point, Jimmy came out with the Rev Ultra. So initially Jimmy was reaching out because he wanted me to test out his Rev Ultra inside the waistband holster. He was hoping I could use it for my everyday carry with the micro dagger and give him some feedback, whether that be positive or negative. So just a quick disclaimer, guys, I did receive this product for free from Jimmy at inheritancearmory.com, but I am going to give you my honest opinion on this holster. After I accepted Jimmy's offer of the holster, I sent him the options I wanted for my holster specifically, which I chose the Jade Carbon Fiber Kydex the discrete carry concepts monoblock and the tuck wing which is what he offers with the dcc monoblock it only took jimmy two to three days to get my holster built and shipped off to me and about a week later i had it in the mailbox ready to be used now when i got the holster in the mail and i pulled it out of the package for the very first time the very first thing i do with all of my holsters is check all the kydex edges now even top tier holster manufacturers can sometimes forget to buff out all the rough edges on the kydex after it's been formed and ready to ship and running my finger along all the edges of the holster not just the top part where i'd be drawn from but also on the inside where all the mounts go for the mono block and the tuck wing the retention screws everything has been buffed and smoothed and makes for a really good comfortable carry now the next thing i check guys is obviously the fitment of the pistol in the holster which there were no major issues right off the bat. The retention was set pretty high coming from Jimmy and that's okay, I just backed off the retention until I found that sweet spot. But Jimmy touts that you can put it in his holster and give it the shake test and the gun will not fall out. And that is the case. Some of the fitment issues that I did have was more nitpicky than anything. On the back by the trigger guard, the Kydex didn't sit flush with the trigger frame. So that was one thing I had pointed out to Jimmy in one of the email exchanges we had. Now on the back of the holster, it does have a high sweat guard. Now, as far as belt attachments, there are a few different options you can get from Inheritance Armory. So I like to go with the monoblock. Jimmy does offer the Ulti Clips and the Ulti Clip Slim, which are both good clip systems if you're not using a belt, if you have jogging shorts or some kind of athletic band, or you don't usually wear a belt. The Ulti Clips are great to clip onto pants or any fabric. I usually wear a belt, so the monoblock is what I went with. Now, along with the monoblock, I went with the Tuck Wing, which is just a retention system for your belt. The wing itself is what pushes the grip into your body so you're not printing as much as you would be without it. So that is one of the options I choose for all my holsters is some type of tuck wing or retention claw. So one of the things I had an issue with right off the bat when I first started conceal carrying this and practicing my draws, my knuckles were hitting the concealment claw on a pretty regular basis. This is pretty common for a lot of holsters that I buy. That is when I set it to the 15 degree offset. Now while this isn't ideal for up front appendix carry, it does lend itself to be offset on the waistband, either at two o'clock, three o'clock, just depending on what you like. And being that this was the first holster that Jimmy sent me, he had only had two holes drilled for the offset, one at zero degrees and one at 15 degrees. So those are the only two options that I had for this holster, and that's totally okay. There is still a lot of value in this holster as it is. Now I can get over hitting my knuckle on the adjustment claw, just like anybody else can. Most of my holsters all end up modifying that claw so that it doesn't hit my knuckles. But this holster was still very comfortable to be carrying inside the waistband appendix or even three o'clock. So because this holster is so small and the pistol itself is so small, you can really play with the location on your belt that you wanna carry this. After about a week of carrying this, I've leaned into carrying it kind of right in the crook between my groin and my thigh or my hip. And usually what I'll do when I first put holsters on inside the waistband appendix style is I'll do some squats, I'll do some knees to chest on both sides just to make sure that I'm not gonna get pinched. So after about a week of emailing Jimmy back and forth every couple of days and unbeknownst to me Jimmy had rebuilt my holster from the ground up 
with a new claw system. Not only did he add the claw to the holster, but instead of having just the two offset holes, one for zero, one for 15, Jimmy made that offset a slot. So now it's fully customizable from zero all the way up to 15 and everything in between. Now again, the retention was on point. There's an audible click every time you seat the pistol into the holster. And of course you give it the shake test. And this holster is holding onto that pistol pretty damn good. The other thing was the forming around the trigger guard. Jimmy took a little extra time to make sure that the Kydex was formed to the trigger guard this time. In reality, it was just a nitpicky detail on my part. I could easily get away with utilizing the holster that he had sent me with that, and I could have easily fixed that myself. Really not a big deal, but the fact that he went out of his way to make sure that it was up to a standard that I had, I really appreciated that from him. Now the claw did fix my knuckle busting issue. It is a smoother plastic, so when I go in for my draw, I'm not tearing up my knuckle on my draw. I can easily slide it in and not have to worry about scraping the skin off my knuckle. So even though I got this holster for free guys i want you guys to know that this holster starts out at 65 dollars and goes anywhere from 65 to 80 dollars depending on what options you choose what type of kydex what belt loop system if you want the tuck wing or you want the claw it all comes down to what your options are I did a little bit of market research and tried to find every company that was making a holster for the micro dagger. Now I found everything from the Etsy $45 at home in the basement Kydex all the way up to the top tier manufacturers offering a thousand different Kydex colors, different Chicago screws and one style of wing. So for $65, I would pay that for this holster. Another thing I considered when making my decision on this holster is the turnaround time. Now granted, Jimmy and I were working together to refine his holster and to find any issues with it. So he was willing to take that extra step and get me the holsters a little quicker, which I fully appreciate, which is really awesome. But on his website, just for you, the average consumer, he is stating a five to 10 business day potential for a turnaround time, just depending on availability of Kydex and parts on hand and the amount of orders he's getting in, obviously. But even still, some of the biggest top tier manufacturers for an appendix holster of this quality, some of them are upwards of three to four weeks of turnaround time. So five to 10 business days on a turnaround, I think that's a pretty good median for a holster manufacturer to maintain. So props to Jimmy on that. Now, if you guys were to ask my opinion, would you recommend this to your friends, your family, anybody else who's looking for an appendix holster for the micro dagger? I would say yes, this is going to be my everyday carry for the micro dagger. Normally I'll go through two to three holsters until I find the one that I want, but this one has fit every need that I needed right out the box. And it was really awesome to do the R&D part with Jimmy at Inheritance. So I feel like I've been a part of the building of this holster, which is why I'm gonna hold on to this and use it as my everyday carry. Now the best part is guys, Jimmy started this doing the micro dagger pistol only. Since our discussions and the development of his holster, he has since expanded to the Springfield Armory Hellcat, which is another subcompact pistol, really great for concealed carrying. You can find it on his website now. Jimmy also plans on adding the Glock 43X to the repertoire of the Rev Ultra, so keep an eye out for that in the future. Also in the future, guys, Jimmy is possibly gonna be adding a spare magazine holster, a standalone, which is what I said would work well. That way you could have some adjustability on the belt. Also guys, they do offer snap caps, five pack, nine mil, 45 ACP. Make sure you check those out. They're 3D printed and pressed into once fired brass. Now, for those of you that wanna get your hands on one of these Rev Ultra appendix carry inside the waistband holsters, Inheritance Armory is doing a limited time discount code. Use code MATSU20. I'll put that up on the screen as well as in the description down below. The first 50 users of Matsu 20 will get 20% off their order from Inheritance Armory. So make sure you're one of those first 50 to get 20% off your order. Even better guys, we're doing a free holster and merchandise giveaway. I've teamed up with Jimmy and we're gonna be offering one lucky winner the chance to get their own custom Rev Ultra inside the waistband holster as well as $40 off of Matsu Pew Pew's own merchandise website. So in order to be part of the giveaway, guys, all you have to do is shoot me an email at matsupewpew at outlook.com. I'll put that up on the screen. Don't forget the dash. Send me a picture of your micro dagger or your Hellcat in whatever configuration you have. Along with the picture, guys, make sure you put in there what options from Inheritance Armor you would pick for your Rev Ultra holster. That way we know what to build for the winner when the time comes. The window for submission of the emails will be open until August 15th. And on August 16th, a winner will be chosen at random. They'll be contacted via email, notifying them that they have won. 
We'll put you in contact with Inheritance Armory to get you your free holster. And you'll also receive a discount code from me for the Matsu Pew Pew merchandise. So that's it for the video today, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Big shout out to Jimmy at Inheritance Armory. Thank you for reaching out and letting me be a part of the R&D for your holster manufacturing. It's been an absolute pleasure talking with you over emails and getting to know you a little better. I look forward to seeing what you're gonna do with Inheritance Armory and I wish you all the best of luck in your endeavors. And as for everybody else, I'll see you in the next video.